Hey, good morning, ASA Central. I saw a post um, that had some questions about creating some standard operating procedures for sales. And I actually was very inspired by the message that was there. And so instead of just writing up a post, I actually put together a presentation. I did it internally for our own team to better understand what that means and how to sell staffing services. But after seeing some of the responses on ASA Central, I thought that more people might enjoy this presentation. So here's your ad hoc on-demand webinar on sales strategies. Let me uh, share my screen, bear with me a second. We'll get this rolling. And so we do this thing at Haley Marketing for our internal team called consulting class or how to be a consultant. And we work to teach our team how to find ways to help our clients with their sales and recruiting challenges. So yesterday, after reading the post on ASA Central, I put together this presentation. So let's kind of start off. You know, the message that was in ASA Central, Kathleen, thank you so much for sharing it, was about trying to find the components of an effective lead generation standard operating procedure, strategies for optimizing lead qualification and conversion, proven methods for evaluating lead generation performance, and pitfalls or challenges you've encountered. Great question. So instead of writing you a long answer, I thought maybe this presentation will help. I'll address some of these points and share a bunch of ideas on strategy. So if you go back to the dawn of time, what is lead generation and staffing? What has been the standard operating procedure? Well, we make a lot of cold calls. We network. We do skill marketing. We send out a lot of email. Sorry, called it spam. We send out a lot of LinkedIn messages. But mostly it's about salespeople. Sometimes they're given a targeted list, sometimes not so much, and they're told to hit the road. They also do drop buys and they network and they join tip groups, but salespeople do a lot of really hard work using the tools of their telephone and their computer and their LinkedIn account. And for 60 years, this has driven success in the industry. You know, why should we change anything? This has been the playbook for selling. Well, right now, as you know, buyers are way harder to reach. They've got more electronic devices around them should be easier to reach, but more opportunity not to respond. Their inboxes are overloaded. They don't answer the phone. They've got gatekeepers and sometimes we don't even know where they are. So inbox overload, the average person in business gets 140 emails a day and we can respond to about 50. So if whatever's coming in is not the top of the priority list, delete. You probably experience, I, you know, it's maybe an overstatement to say no one answers the phone, but it's a low percentage of prospects who answer the phone, low percentage of businesses that even have somebody answering the phone. And with remote work, we don't know where to find our prospects, particularly if you're in IT staffing or other knowledge work, your clients are very likely to be working remote. And now I, I can't just stop by to try to drop by and see what's going on. Industrial staffing, healthcare, yeah, you still can get away with that to an extent, but you know the practice has been somewhat, more than somewhat frowned upon. More competition. So our industry has more companies in staffing than ever, and that can be staffing companies, MSPs, technology platforms offering staffing-like services, freelancers, whether they're here in the U.S. or global, and particularly you're seeing this in healthcare, more DIY, do-it-yourself, where companies are trying to disintermediate the staffing industry and saying, we can do this ourselves. You know, and then lastly, there's just more noise. You know, every time we have a break, we're pulling out, you know, this little magical device. Oh, can barely see it with the zoom, put it right next to my head. Our phones, you know, and we're scrolling through it and we're seeing what's going on. And we're just, we're not open to as many sales messages as we were once upon a time. So it just means it's a lot harder to sell. So if I'm relying on traditional sales tactics, my percentage of success won't be zero, but it's going to be less. And as my friend Mike Jacketote at Butler Street says, you know, you have to do double the work for half the effort in this kind of an environment. And that's a recipe for a lot of sales rep frustration and increased sales turnover. So what's the secret to selling more? Don't do what everybody else is doing. I almost want to say you don't want an SOP because you don't want the same playbook other staffing companies are using. You want to think about how do we have our company have a better strategy, a better sales process, 
using better tools and provide them with better sales training for how to deal with prospects and gatekeepers and even existing clients. So supporting the sales team, this is something we call the marketing pyramid. So the very top of the pyramid are your salespeople and your recruiters. The foundation of the pyramid is your company values, your mission, your vision. So as you can see in the pyramid, you translate what your company is all about at its foundation into your messaging. How do you talk about your company? How do you say things that don't sound like everybody else? That should then get propagated into your website and your sales collateral. So wherever somebody sees you, they're seeing the right messaging. And then between the green bar and where your sales team sits, then you can have things to support them. Integrated direct marketing, content and inbound marketing, recruitment marketing. We'll talk about some of those in just a second. All right, here's the big chart. This is a bit overwhelming, but you want to drive more sales leads. As you can see in the orange and the light blue, there's really two strategies. Number one is I can help my sales team do more, and they're relying primarily on cold calling and networking and LinkedIn, or I can do inbound lead gen. Now, they're not inbound lead gen is not bigger because it's more important. There's just more things under it. For the sales team, there's two primary things that you can do. You can improve your sales process. We'll talk about some ideas to do that. You can improve your sales tools. On the inbound lead gen, you've got a website. You can make it do more for you. Increase conversions so that more visitors are responding, or at least you know who's visiting your website. You can do more to get found with digital marketing. You can use event marketing, whether I go to big national trade conferences or local meetups, my local chamber of commerce events, I can think about ways to use events more strategically for sales lead generation. And that last one, OPS is an acronym you've probably never heard of. It stands for other people's stages. Think of this as influencer marketing. So who already knows your ideal customers? Who has influence over them? And can you become part of their stage? Can you join their webinars or provide a webinar for their audience? Can you be on their podcast? Can you be a guest blog post writer? Can you do live seminars at conferences and local events? Can you do PR? And so these are a bunch of different strategies and tactics to try to help you generate sales leads. But I'd like to go through before we wrap this up, five specific things you might look at in 2024. So number one is increase your client share, upsell, cross-sell, retain your accounts. So upsell just means I want to get a larger percentage of my client's business. So if you think about every one of your clients, they probably have multiple staffing vendors. Let's assume they have five. Let's assume you get exactly one fifth or 20%. You need to talk to your clients and say, what would it take for us to be the first call, what would it take for us to get a larger percentage of your business? Because if you could take that 20% to 25 or 30% at each one of your clients, that's a big increase in business. Cross-selling. How can I sell new services to my accounts? Now, this is one of the greatest frustrations for all salespeople is that clients forget what you can do. Let's say you sell light industrial staffing and clerical staffing. And you go to a client for whom you have a great relationship and you provide a ton of LI staffing. You go to a meeting and you find out they just used somebody else for their clerical staffing. You're like, what the heck? Why didn't you call us? And the response is going to be, well, we didn't think you did that. And that's not that you made a mistake in selling. It's just, it's a simple fact of positioning that when someone buys something from us, whatever they bought in their mind, that's all we do. So for cross-selling to work, you need a very deliberate program to, and these are the bullets, identify the relevant decision makers that you could cross-sell to. Then get testimonials from your existing contacts, your existing clients, and ask them for referrals to those new contacts. Then your sales team has to do that one-to-one -one outreach to talk to those new contacts, to introduce your company and tell them, hey, here's why we'd be a great fit for your staffing needs. And then you want some sort of capabilities overview that shows somebody, here's the range of things we do. And you can use that when you sit down with current clients and new contacts at clients to explain everything you could be doing for that organization. Because cross-selling takes a really deliberate marketing plan. And the retention, there's no, no bullets on here, but retention is what can we do to get closer to clients to build those relationships so there's less chance that if our client cuts back, 
we get cut out of the staffing sales. Number two, improve your sales process. So IDM stands for integrated direct marketing. And then it says plus something called signature content. Think about having expertise that you want to own. That's your signature content. Some companies, it's their annual salary survey. Other companies, it might be a checklist for hiring IT talent. The idea is you're thinking about something that matters to your clients. It's a very important issue. You can help solve that issue with your services. You're not making a sales pitch. You're creating educational content, your signature presentation that your company is going to be associated with. Integrated direct marketing is about taking that signature content and creating a multi-step, multi-channel program to systematically go after every prospect. And then in that campaign, you want to make sure you're incorporating value. It's not just sales pitch, sales pitch, sales pitch. It's here's how I can help you. Here's the problems you're having that we can help you solve. Here's information that has nothing to do with what we sell, but we know you'll find it valuable. The more you can do education and content marketing as part of your sales process, the more you position yourself as a trusted advisor, as a company that someone wants to work with. So what is integrated direct marketing? Well, it means target your ideal prospects, build that list so your salespeople know who to go after. Then you create this multi-step, multi-touch campaign with lots of different types of communication, actual physical mail or packages or drop-offs, email, LinkedIn, or other social direct messaging outreach, and of course, integrated with your sales team making calls. And at the end of that, because we're not going to convert everybody, we have an ongoing nurturing process to stay top of mind. So the way it works is you use that multi-step campaign in a process. You're probably driving people to a landing page to get your signature content, but you're using this multi-step cam campaign to engage, get the attention and interest of the buyer you want to sell to. And your salesperson does the follow-up calls at set points in that process to try to get an appointment, to reach out on LinkedIn and make a connection. And then the ongoing nurturing is email, calls. In some cases, you might even use text messaging as well. But it's about having a structured process that has repeated touches and you're going to need multiple touches. I think the, uh, the playbook now says at least seven to 12. I've seen some people saying 15 to 20. I heard one person saying 75. I've never done a campaign with 75, but we've done a lot that have had seven to 12 touches to try to build that top of mind awareness, to try to add value, to try to position as that trusted advisor to get the appointment. All right. Strategy number two about improving sales is to take that integrated direct marketing a step further. So let's say you're a company that's, you know, you want to add five new key accounts. So you could do what's called a Dream 100 campaign. This is a concept from a book called The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes. And the idea is take your best, absolute, move the needle kinds of prospects. And in the book, they talk about build a list of 100 of them. I don't care if it's 100, 250, make a list of the companies you most want to break into, and then you create an ABM or an account-based marketing campaign. What does this mean? You take that same process you did for your integrated direct marketing, and you personalize it for each company you're going to target. You try to find all of the relevant decision makers, the senior level executives, the HR managers, the department heads, the frontline supervisors, everybody who could be involved in the staffing decision. And you customize your letters, your emails, your calls, to that company based on the research you've done about the organization. It's a lot of work, but these are key accounts and you're not gonna have a huge list here. So you're gonna do this personalization, do the outreach, take them through the process, then you can create a new small batch. You're gonna consistently, maybe every month, you have a new batch of prospects going into your account-based marketing process. At the end of the very personalized outreach, they may roll into the same nurturing as everybody on your integrated direct marketing, but you've taken your sales and marketing outreach to a whole different level by making it one-to-one -one for that specific company. Strategy number three, hey, give your sales team even better tools to sell. So in your direct marketing, in your sales outreach, start using things like video email. You're seeing me do it right here. I jumped on Zoom. I made a recording. I put it into ASA Central. 
you can do the exact same thing. Your salespeople can use recordings that they send out to introduce themselves, introduce your company, introduce the value that you can provide. Also tools like Loom make it very easy to create videos. There's a ton of other ones that you can use to create video email. It's a game changer in that first contact. Also in the follow-up, um, you can use marketing automation. If you're not using Sense, Bullhorn Automation, HubSpot, Active Campaign, you want to be able to send automated follow-up to people who have visited your website, people who have downloaded content, people who are in your ATS and you know the status when those status changes to be able to trigger the next step of logical communication. And you're making sure very consistent sales follow-up. You're also using the automation to tell your sales team when it's time to make a call. And a great use case um, that I recommend with the automation is also to re-engage former clients, dormer clients, dormant clients, people you haven't talked to in a while, and use automation to say, hey, who would like to uh, talk about staffing challenges for 2024? And then lead tracking software. There are tools available now, full disclosure, we provide one of them, that let you see who's coming to your website, the companies that are coming. And you can now even identify many of the actual individuals who are on your website. So you get a daily report saying, hey, these are the people on our site. You can even get real-time alerts when people hit your website so your sales team have better qualified names to call on. And then retargeting pay-per-click advertising, those ads that follow you around. You can do that on your website. So when somebody visits your services page, your ads can follow them around promoting not just your company, but your value in this economy and the reasons to meet with your sales team. Strategy four is building a digital marketing system. So there's a lot of tools in digital marketing to attract, engage, and retain people. We want to think about content marketing, blogs. Now, Haley Mail Insights, you can skip that. That's, that was for my team. Those are specific products we sell. Uh, but that signature content that attracts people. Search engine optimization, creating content that will get found by answering the questions that employers are asking so your website becomes a source of information. Using social media uh, to brand your organization and brand individuals in your company. Using paid advertising, search ads, Google search, Bing search, display ads through Google's display network or social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram using advertising as a way to reach your target audience to attract them to your website. When they come to your website, you have to engage them with content and then you have to stay top of mind to build on that engagement with automation, email newsletters. And then most importantly, we gotta get people to take action, we gotta convert. So we're gonna drive people to the website and make sure we're using website optimization. Having mark MQL and SQL, marketing qualified leads and sales qualified leads. So basically that means we've got offers or calls to action. Those are those CTAs. In our blogs, we're including calls to action in the blog. So it's got great educational content interspersed with things that are going to drive people to want to talk to your sales team. And we're using CRO or conversion rate optimization best practices. And I apologize for all the acronyms. Again, this was an internal presentation that I'm sharing. And our team's really used to all of these marketing speak acronyms. And then landing pages. Do we have specific conversion pages we're driving people to that tell people what you're offering to them, what you can do for them, why they should talk to you so it's really quick and easy for them to connect to you? And using direct response and paid advertising with lead gen paid advertising ads, we don't even have to bring them to the website. We can get a response right where the ad is displaying. All right, a diagram of this. So your website's sort of the hub where you're trying to get people to, and it's got the CRO, the conversion optimization. It's got the landing page. It's optimized for SEO. It's got current content. It's integrated with your ATS, all that good stuff. And then we're going to put all these things around it. So content, are we creating blogs, long form articles? Are we writing white papers? Are we doing video and putting it on the website? Do we have a company podcast? And we're linking that on the website. Are we doing things for SEO that's really focused on the right keywords? Are we asking, or excuse me, are we answering the questions our audience is asking? Are we making sure we're on the local map in Google My Business? Are we getting a lot of reviews? That's important for SEO. Are we building inbound links? Are we using paid ads? Are we buying the right keywords? Are we doing display? Are we doing local map advertising? 
Are we active on social media in a way that will engage employers because we're talking about the issues that matter to those employers? Are we doing email marketing to nurture relationships and stay top of mind and provide great value that positions our organization as the thought leader and that trusted advisor? Are we building relationships with referral sources by sharing content with them so that it brings people back to your site? Are we doing retargeting ads and marketing automation to keep site visitors coming back? This is a digital marketing system. Do you have all of these tools in place to maximize your lead generation and lead conversion from people who are learning about your organization, finding your website, learning about what you can do? Strategy number five, look for other ways to reach your ideal client. So that beautiful stick figure, uh, picture that being the job title, the person you are most trying to sell to, an HR manager, a CEO, a plant manager, a general manager, uh, a CIO, the director of nursing, whoever that is. How do you reach that person today? Do you call? Do you email? Do you drop by? Do you send letters? Well, all of that stuff you're doing today is promotion. We're promoting our business to that person. But think of that person as being in the center of a triangle. So I mentioned influencers. The left leg of that triangle are people who already know the individual in the middle. And sometimes it's faster to market to the influencer and get referred in than it is to market directly to the person in the middle. I'll give you an example, a recruiting firm that I'm currently talking to. They recruit people who help organizations implement AI and their ideal client is actually somebody who got venture funding, somebody who's either gotten seed money or series A. They want the CEO of that organization to target, but that person's super busy, could care less about an executive recruiter and is hard to identify. So their marketing is to the venture capital people, the angel investors, the bigger venture funds, the mezzanine finance companies. They're looking to identify all the money people because those are the ones who have influence over those CEOs they really want to reach. And by building relationships with those influencers, they can get referred in. Now, influencers can be people inside the organization, maybe somebody's supervisor, maybe somebody's subordinate if you're in IT staffing, and that person is the CIO. Very often, the department heads and project managers influence. They push ideas up to the CIO. If you're in manufacturing and you want to deal with the head of HR, it could be the CEO, the general manager pushing it down. It could be people outside the organization, other HR managers. The idea is to identify everybody who's a potential source of influence and then ask yourself, would it be easier to build a relationship and market to the influencer to get to the person we really want to reach? And the last leg of the triangle is to be that source of information. So this is where content creation, that digital marketing is so important. Are people finding you to get answers to the questions they have, the problems they're facing? Are you writing content? Are you blogging? Are you creating videos? Are you doing a podcast where you're providing great content that helps your ideal customers to address their talent management related problems? Because if you're doing that, now people will find your website as a source of information. Influencers will refer you in. Now when you do the promotion stuff, it works better. So look for other ways to reach your ideal client. You might go to events where they hang out. There's events where you could attend, you could be an exhibitor, you could sponsor, or ideally you're a speaker. And then for every event, you can look at what you do before the show, at the show, and after the show to do marketing to make sure you're reaching out to the people you most want to deal with. Pre-show marketing is the stuff that gets most often skipped, but taking that integrated direct marketing process I showed you earlier and applying it to conferences and even local events can dramatically increase the percentage of people who will meet with you at the event. And post-show, something like 60 or 70% of trade show leads never get followed up on. Make sure you have a game plan so your sales reps follow up with every lead. And then OPS, which I mentioned earlier, other people's stages. Who's already putting on webinars for the audience you want to reach? Could you be a speaker on their webinar? Can you be on their podcast? Maybe somebody already has a great podcast targeting your industry. Can you be a guest? Or can you create a podcast where you bring in the influencers to be guests on your show? And now the influencers tell their network that they were on your show. 
and you get out to all of your ideal customers because your influencer told them about your show? Can you do guest blogs that you put on somebody else's website, maybe a trade association, maybe a consultant in your industry, maybe the local Sherm chapter? Can you build relationships with the people who are decision influencers, other companies that sell to your ideal clients, uh, consultants who work in your market or your industry? Can you do PR to raise visibility for your company? So I think that's the end. Uh, the take home was from my team. I'm going to stop it here. But your take home from this, if you like the ideas, look at those five strategies. Go back and look at that bigger diagram that I showed earlier and think about how do we create a game plan for selling that doesn't look like everybody else so that our SOP is unique to our organization, unique to our messaging, unique to our signature content and what we want to own. I hope this is helpful. If you want more ideas like this, hey, come to our website, hillymarketing.com. Go to the resources section. We've got a ton of eBooks on sales strategy. We've also got a great weekly newsletter where we share one tip a week. Uh, the Smart Ideas Weekly. So if you uh, like this, feel free to sign up at haleymarketing.com. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to stop my share and end this. Take care.